I am back. <laughs> What's up, everyone? It took about a it took about a week and a half break uh, for the holidays, spending time with family and friends, opening gifts, and uh, hey, just relaxing. You know, uh, it's crazy. I'm, I haven't done much gaming uh, during the holidays because I've just been um, just really busy running around and stuff. So, uh, wanted to do a video before uh, the new year. It's crazy. 2015 is pretty much done. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're in the last, you know, 48 hours of, uh, 2015. So, uh, on that note, I uh, wanted to do this video because, uh, kind of, I guess to kind of piggyback on podcast number six and Hey, if you guys haven't checked out podcast number six, definitely want to check it out. It is very entertaining and funny to say the least. Um, shout out again to my co-host who helped make that podcast one of the most entertaining podcast that I've done. Um, again, shout out to Southbound 110 and the Way Word. Hope to get those guys back on sometime again soon. So, so now that 2015 is over, you know we can kind of all reflect back on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. And I'm really curious to get your feedback, the viewers, the listeners, um, in in what you guys think. Uh, or which console you think had the better overall 2015 and no this is not a, a sales number conversation uh that's not this this video so um you know if you if you want to talk sales um you know you're probably wasting your breath here because that's not what we're going to be discussing here or i'm going to be discussing um but i really want to get your thoughts opinions on again which of the two game consoles you think had the better overall overall 2015 in, ter in terms of providing you um, a great gaming experience or maybe some you know new features or updates that were added to the game console uh, of your choice in 2015 that has given you a better overall experience and now for me I'm a multi console owner own both the Xbox one and PlayStation 4 um, so you know for some of us to own both you know we can um, do a nice compare and contrast in terms of our uh, experiences in, in gaming on both platforms uh, this year. Uh, but even if you own one, I mean, you could still, you know, you know, talk about, you know, some of the, um, you know, great experiences that you had uh, with your platform of choice in 2015. So, um, again, please leave your comments in the comment section below. Um, and again, this is not a, a sales conversation. So for me, uh, the Xbox One had a had a better year for me in 2015, and and it really starts with, for me, the the new Xbox One dashboard update and backwards compatibility and some of the new accessories that were announced for the Xbox One. And so let's start with backwards compatibility. Look, I wasn't a big fan of the old Xbox One dashboard. Felt like it was broken. Felt like it was cumbersome. It was a pain in the ass to, to get to your friends list. It was slow. And Microsoft did a complete 180 and really did a great job in revamping the dashboard. It is a much improved dashboard. It is a lot smoother, a lot snappier. The Kinect works better. Uh, it's easier to access your friends list. It's just great. To me, this is how the dashboard should have been at launch. But hey, it is what it is. It's in the past. Um, you know, we're living in the present. And uh, they did a great job with updating the dashboard. Now, backwards compatibility. E3 this year. That was, to me, the, the big megaton announcement uh, at E3. And for me, it was the big megaton because as a gamer it offers me a lot of great value and in my opinion anytime you can play or have access to your old um, you know game library for the previous console generation for free and I have to repay for it again that's awesome I'll take that any day then going back and having to buy games that I already own or used to own in the past to play on my uh, current game console if I choose to so um, again that was a, a, a great uh, value add for me and I think it's a great value add for a lot of gamers a lot of uh, Xbox one owners as well and then accessories the Xbox one elite controller is like the Ferrari of game controllers now I don't own one it's on my to-do list or to buy list in 2016 uh, but from a lot of people that I've talked to and I have a couple buddies that are hardcore gamers that picked up the controller over the holidays um, you know they're they're just ranting and raving about it and a lot of the reviews that you know, I've seen online have been very positive. Um, you know, in regards to the the controller, and it sounds like it's, you know, it's it's the best you know game control on the market right now. Um, you know, if you could afford the the hundred fifty dollar price tag um, of the controller. So now I want to talk about software because 
you know, software is obviously probably the most important component of a game console because that's what you primarily use your game console for, for playing games. And, you know, if I think about some of the old uh, or some of my, my favorite game consoles that I've owned in the past, there's there's been a, a, a consistent theme with those game consoles. They've always had great first-party or exclusive content mixed in with great third-party content as well. And this is where I feel Microsoft really excelled in 2015. We've heard the message from them. They've talked about focusing on games, and they and they really brought that message home in 2015. And so we saw a lot of great exclusive content. We saw um, the Rare Replay Collection. We saw Forza 6. We saw uh, Halo 5. And then we got you know, Rise of the Tomb Raider, which... Uh, in, in my opinion, is, is one of the best games um, that I played this year. I would say it, it is second to uh, The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 was my game of the year. Um, so, you know, they, they had a great um, showing of exclusive content to offer to me. Um, and then, you know, the, the third party stuff. I mean, they, you know, if you look at the, you know, if, I, if I think about the first party or the exclusive content that was offered, and the third party content with games like The Witcher 3 and, um, you know, Metal Gear Solid 5. No, I just really feel like, for me, the Xbox One offered a, a more well-rounded uh, portfolio of software titles. And, you know, look, if, if you're into indie games, they've done, they did a better job at offering more uh, indie-related content as well. So, um, again, they really, in my opinion, you know, really delivered uh, in that message of, you know, games first. So, well, let me know what you guys think, you know, again, in the comments section below. Uh, again, this is not a sales conversation. I know someone's probably going to troll me and throw sales numbers in there but that's not what this conversation is so well guys i'm you know hope to get another video out um probably this weekend after the new year kind of do a preview uh, of gaming in 2016 2016 is going to be exciting so well guys hey thanks for watching the video and i'll catch you guys soon